morning and welcome to our service today. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers that are here this morning. We're going to begin by singing together Faith of Our Fathers. The lyrics will be on the screen or if you prefer in your hymnals on page number 279. And we're going to sing verses 1 and 3. Would you please stand and let's worship together. Turn to number 265, Father, I adore you, we'll sing all three verses. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers in this uh, place today. I don't know, I came in right after we began singing. I don't know if Tracy said anything, but the organ died. The organ died. Isn't that a terrible thing? Uh, So uh, when this service is over, we're going to have a laying on of hands on the organ. And uh, so, uh, no, we've called the organ man, uh, and uh, we are looking for an organ donor. (laughs) Uh, It is dad joke day, isn't it? So uh, I can do that. Uh, but anyway, no, uh, so, uh, but thank you to Ree for being flexible and uh, moving over to the piano to uh, bless us today. Uh, today we begin a new a sermon series from the book of Genesis, and one of the things we're going to do with this series is make a, a, the, the, I think, the incredibly powerful connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament. We know they're, they're intricately uh, connected, but we're going to make those connections, and, and I, uh, you know, Genesis begins, of course, with the familiar words that, you know, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And most of us have heard that uh, phrase or heard that verse before. The Apostle John picks up on that phrase. And when he writes his gospel, he writes this, this powerful um, uh, expansion on the Genesis 1 uh, account. He says, in the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. 
He says in verse 10, the light was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came, in, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the Word, and that Word was Jesus. Today, as we bow for prayer, I want to, keep, I want to encourage you to keep in mind today and tomorrow especially. Uh, tomorrow, a federal holiday, our, our nation will commemorate Juneteenth, uh, the commemoration of the uh, emancipation of, of, of all slaves uh, in the United States back in the 1860s. And uh, so uh, we will be commemorating that uh, tomorrow through that federal holiday. Um, I do want to ask you, though, with that in mind, to keep in your prayers the fact that, that slavery is still alive and well in this world today. Uh, researchers tell us that there are more slaves in the world today than there has ever been in the history of the planet. Now that's kind of immune to us here in our country where you know we, we ended that a long time ago, right? Well, no, it's still alive and well, uh, not only around the world, but even right here in, in the United States with labor trafficking, sex trafficking, and many forms of slavery that are in the world today. And I want you to pray about that. I want you to use this, uh, this commemoration as an opportunity to pray. Fairmount uh, partners with International Justice Mission to fight slavery in the world today. So I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray for other organizations. I want you to pray for law enforcement uh, as uh, we fight this scourge that is still rampant in our world today. Uh, let's bow and let's pray together. Father, today um, we are grateful that we're grateful for the dads who provided us with life. Um, I pray for every dad in this room, every dad in this church, every dad in this community, that they will keep their eyes focused on you, that regardless of their age or the age of their children, they will continue to point their children to you, that, that you will always be the source of wisdom and you will always be the source of truth. May you give dads the courage to always point their families, their children, to Jesus. Father, today we do pray for groups like International Justice Mission and all those others who are fighting slavery in the world today. Uh, Lord, we even know in our own nation there's still, uh, there's still racism and there's still injustice. May you remind each and every one of us every day, Lord, that we are all descendants of Adam. We're all of the same race. We all bleed the same color. We're all brothers and sisters. We are all um, neighbors, according to Jesus. And so, Father, for our neighbors who are in slavery today, whether they are here or whether they are on the other side of the globe, um, we ask for their freedom today. We ask for their rescue today. So empower all those, whether they're in law enforcement or in, or in mission organizations or whichever organizations out there, Lord, fighting slavery, may you empower them today to free those who are in bondage. We are grateful that we have the freedom from sin through Jesus. May we celebrate. May we be humbled. May we remember and be thankful every day for the freedom from bondage that we have in Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. As we prepare for communion this morning, let's sing both verses of number 433, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
Well, I, too, want to wish all the fathers here a happy Father's Day. I am very blessed um, to have a father who was a Christian and raised me to, to believe in the Lord and to love the Lord. And um, as I dropped off some trinkets to him this morning, he blessed me with Hanover tomatoes, cucumbers, and squash. But he always instilled in me, and still does, the fact that we have a Lord and Savior that loves us so much that he gave his life for us so that we could live. As the folks walked in this morning, you see the little bobbers outside that remind us of what God did for us. The, the white reminds us of the purity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The red reminds us of the blood that he shed for us. And the name Jesus is the one we should love the most and keep our eyes on. We're given instruction by our Lord and Savior, um, and we should always keep him first in our lives. He loved us so much that he died for our sins. You know, the, um, the Apostle Paul wrote, kind of paraphrasing or quoting um, Isaiah, no eye has seen, no, mind, uh, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those that love him. Jesus Christ tells us, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And one of those commands is to spread this gospel message, to be fishers of men, to open our mouths and tell folks about what the Lord did for us, died for our sins, so that when we make him our Lord and Savior, we're given grace and life eternal. Christ tells his disciples, and I believe he tells us, he gives us a command, not a request. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we could kind of translate that here today to you will be my witnesses in Cold Harbor, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, in this country, and to every continent on the planet. That's not a request, that's a command. And we as Christians need to do that. We're not doing our, our neighbors any favors if we're hiding the joy that we have. And that's life eternal through Jesus Christ. You know, us fathers, we all have father stories we like to tell. And one that I probably mentioned before, but I'll, I'll bring it up now, talking about love. And our daughter Callie, as she was maybe four or five years old, I would say, Callie, I love you. And she would respond, I love you too, as much as I can. And I remember thinking, as much as she can, all the, the, the love she can muster, she loves me as much as she can. But as she would say that, as time went on, that, that's not a, a, a very a, a overwhelmingly common response, I love you as much as I can. And I came to find out that as a four, five, six-year-old, in Miss Denise and Miss De Mr. Dan Oliveri's Sunday school class, she was being taught she had to love God the most. And when she was telling me she loved me as much as she could, it was because she had to love God the most, but she loved me as much as she could. And of course, we all have precious, precious memories about our children, but that's the truth. We have a God that loved us so much, he died for our sins. I think it's a um, very easy request to make. We need to love him, our Lord and Savior, as much as, he, as we can for what he did for us, died for our sins. Again, we need to open our mouths to the folks outside of these walls that don't share our destiny, which is life eternal, in a place beyond our imagination. Wonderful. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do praise you and I thank you for what you did for us. Um, you, you died for my sins. That is uh, almost incomprehensible for me to understand, but you did it. You made it very clear that you want us all to be with you for all of eternity, and you gave us a path to do that. We praise you and we thank you for that. Lord, when I pray, I'm going to pray that you forgive me for my sins when I let you down on a daily basis, and I, and I pray that you always help me to be a better Christian husband, a better Christian father, and a better Christian to everyone I come in contact with. So when we get the opportunity to open our mouths and share the reason for our great joy, we'll do that. 
in a world that desperately and as always desperately need to hear the life-saving message of Jesus Christ. In his name I pray, amen. We read in Matthew his um, eyewitness account of the Last Supper before Jesus would be betrayed and then crucified for our sins when he records these words. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Matthew continues his eyewitness account of the Last Supper by recording these words. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. On 
the hands of glory happy reunions on the streets of gold angel choir singing glad praises forever but Jesus will outshine them all. But Jesus will outshine them Well, thank you, David. I know uh, David uh, reflects on his own uh, father in heaven today and uh, his own uh, mom and dad uh, and celebrating and enjoying those beautiful views of heaven. Uh, I think of uh, my, my dad passed away 27 years ago, and uh, we were living in New York at the time, and uh, we packed the kids up in the minivan. They were just little dinky dudes at the time, and uh, we uh, came down to Charlottesville to check on my mom and spend, you know, be with her. And and our four-year-old, Matthew, bounds into the house, and he bounds up those steps. He finds his grandmother, and he says, Grandma, good news, Pappy's in heaven. And uh, my mom, you know, I'm like, ah, but she embraces him, and she says, you're exactly right, Matthew. And uh, today, uh, yes, my parents have that mansion, but I'm telling you the best thing they've enjoyed in heaven already is Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's, uh, that's, that's what uh, brings us together on Sundays to talk, about, to talk about Jesus. Well, it is Father's Day, and so it's always an appropriate time to tell a couple dad jokes, right? We have to have some dad jokes on Father's Day, right? All right, so let me just ask you, you know, what, what, did, the, uh, what did the banana's kids give uh, the banana for Father's Day? What did the banana's kids give the banana for Father's Day? You know what, right? Slippers. 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 <laughs> They were really appealing to him, so uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, you probably know this one already, but I still got to throw it out there. Uh, why, why, do dads, uh, why do dads who like golf always like to get an extra pair of socks? Why do dads who like golf always like to get an extra pair of socks? Well, just in case they get a hole in one, so uh, got to have extra socks. Uh, somebody told me one at the end of the last service. Uh, they said, why did the drum, what, what did the drummer name his children? What did the drummer name his children? Uh, Anna one, Anna two. Uh, Those are dad jokes. And so, see, you enjoy a good dad joke, right? Right, right. I'm blessed to have had a dad um, who always uh, pointed me and my brothers to Jesus. Uh, My dad was not a perfect man by any stretch, but he loved us. He loved my brothers and me. Uh, He loved his wife, our mom. And he loved his church, which for him was Fairmount. He loved Fairmount, and he loved Jesus. For our new sermon series that we begin today, we want to talk about Jesus. Jesus is the answer to the most pressing issues and the most pressing problems that our world has today. Jesus is the answer to whatever is worrying you and whatever is worrying the folks that you love. Jesus is the one name that brings hope and peace and a second chance for those who think they have none. Every sermon we preach in this place, regardless of who is in the pulpit, every sermon eventually points to Jesus. This summer, though, we want to talk about Jesus. We want to spend our summer talking about our Lord. I'm, and I'm excited about how we're going to do that. We're going to kind of go about it a little bit differently, and I hope that you enjoy that. Uh, the Old Testament is full of references to Jesus. Uh, and, and you probably already know that, but there, there still is this, there is an interesting debate that rages amongst the scholars. I mean, not me and, you know, maybe you, but, um, and they debate, you know, how many verses in the Old Testament actually do point to Jesus? Uh, 
How many of the verses in the Old Testament talk about the coming Messiah, talk about the coming Savior of God's people? You know, they're all talking about Jesus. How many verses is that? Is this verse? Is that verse? What about this one? What about that one? One scholar uh, I read puts that number at 574 references in the Old Testament to Jesus. 574 references. Another scholar put the number a little more conservatively at 456 verses that talk about the coming of Jesus. Now, I don't know, whichever one you go with, that is a significant portion of our scriptures, isn't it? Hundreds of verses that talk to us about Jesus, just in the Old Testament alone. Now, of course, all of this begins in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. The the title of that book uh, points to the theme of that book, Genesis, the beginning the beginning of all things. Not only the the beginning in the creation of the world, but the beginning and creation of humanity, the beginning and creation of our salvation. Uh, Genesis is actually a book about Jesus. So while you're enjoying your time in the Old Testament, while you're still focusing on Jesus, we have chosen Genesis as our summer reading book for this year. Every summer, we take one book, one, maybe two, maybe two, one or two books of the Bible, and we focus on them for the entire summer. This is the 14th year that we have done that, and and this year we're doing the book of Genesis. Every week, uh, the outline at the bottom of the printed outline will be a direction for what you should read for next week. Next week, uh, you'll see there, we want you to read Genesis chapter 4. Summer is a big time of reading for people, you know. People uh, get books, uh, they buy books to read, they uh, download books onto their, their, uh, their tablet or their Kindle or Nook or whatever. Uh, the website Study Finds, Study Finds reports that over half of American adults, over half of American adults will read at least one book over the summer. I, I was kind of surprised at that. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of books to be reading over the summer. I, you know, I've already started a small stack that, um, that I'm planning to read, some books that I've been looking forward to reading that I haven't read yet, and I'm looking forward to reading them over this summer. Uh, even with gas at, you know, $12 a gallon, whatever it is, you know, now that the, the I'm not saying the pandemic is over, don't send me notes, uh, but the pandemic is certainly not the same as it was, and so folks are feeling more free to travel, more free to go and get away for a little bit, and so uh, when folks do that, I think it's a really healthy thing for us to still be doing the same thing together. So whether you're on vacation far away or just camping somewhere nearby, every Sunday you'll know where we are in the book of Genesis, and you can be reading along, and you can be where we are. You can obviously watch online. We have three of our services, including this one, online every single Sunday morning, so you can watch our services. Uh, You can get up early on vacation, grab your cup of coffee, and, and enjoy us for a time of worship. Um, I'm kind of excited today. I don't know. They're probably all sleeping, but uh, uh, we have eight folks in Poland right now, and uh, they actually had church this morning. Uh, now it's six, six hours. So what time is it there? What's that? 4.30? Is that 4.30 in the afternoon? Uh, so Chris preached this morning. They moved. Uh, the church, Several churches met together this morning at a lake, and uh, Chris preached, and at the end of that, they were going to have a time of baptism. At least 18 folks were planning to get baptized today, and they were expecting that even more would get baptized you know, when they were at this service. So I'm sure our team uh, had an exciting uh, morning, and I can't wait to see pictures, uh, to see video. Uh, Again, this is how we stay connected even when we are apart. And so Genesis, working through Genesis together is one way that you you can do that. Genesis is full of glimpses of Jesus. That's why we're calling this sermon series Glimpses. Glimpses provide a brief, sometimes unexpected glance um, of something of greater importance. Now, you know, I always, you know, you know, reading about things going on in pop culture, and one of the interesting dimensions of pop culture is the inclusion of Easter eggs in, in movies. Are you familiar with the term Easter eggs? I know you know what an Easter egg is, but have you ever heard that in terms of movies? Uh, you know, the Easter egg comes from the concept of an Easter egg, where you go out in the backyard, and you take some little colorful Easter eggs, and you hide them in different places uh, for your kids to then go out, and they find the Easter eggs, and maybe there's some candy in it 
or maybe there's a couple coins in it, or, or just the egg itself is exciting to find. Well, movie producers have often had their own Easter eggs, uh, they use that term, that they place into movies, connecting that movie to something else of importance. For instance, uh, I love the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, I love me some Indiana Jones, right? Uh, in, the, in the first one, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, when, when Indiana Jones is down in an Egyptian temple looking for the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, on the walls of that, of that temple are hieroglyphics. And George Lucas, uh, who, uh, who directed uh, Indiana Jones, George Lucas included in the hieroglyphics some, uh, hierog- some pictures of robots, the robots R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars, which he had also directed. And so just an interesting way, you've got to be a real nerd to know that and a real nerd to find that. Uh, but now when next time you're watching that, uh, you can look on the back wall and find R2-D2 back there on, on the back wall. In The Godfather, uh, Francis Ford Coppola always had oranges in a scene when someone was going to die. So if you see oranges, you know somebody's either already died or they're getting ready to die, so cover your eyes, you know, and that's all good. Sometimes the Easter egg is the producer or director themselves. Alfred Hitchcock, Stan Lee, love to put themselves in their own movies in these short little cameos, and those kind of serve as, as Easter eggs. There are wonderful, powerful hints to Jesus. You might call them true Easter eggs throughout the Old Testament, especially in the book of Genesis. Now, some of them are quite obvious. Obviously, Noah, uh, who saves the world, is a beautiful um, uh, picture, a beautiful glimpse of Jesus who saves the world. And we'll talk about Noah. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that being the theme of our VBS this year. The other ones are not as obvious, and we're going to enjoy uncovering those and discovering them as we go through the amazing text of Genesis. We're going to explore 13 different Genesis personalities, and we are also going to have for you something for else for you to do during this summertime. We have uh, trading cards that you might have seen when you came in today with today's uh, character that we're focusing on, the glimpse of Jesus. On the back of that is a piece of a puzzle. And this summer, you're going to be able to put all of these pieces together, and you're going to see a beautiful, stunning picture that we've prepared for you. This is a piece of a puzzle is just a glimpse, a glimpse of the greater, bigger picture, isn't it? And so when you put all these together, you're going to have a beautiful picture uh, that I think you're going to be really blessed by. So get one of these. We, we're asking for one per household. Get one of these uh, as you come in each Sunday. There will be a, a total of uh, 12 of these uh, focusing on 13, so obviously one of them is going to have two people focusing on them throughout this month. Um, I think you're going to be really blessed and, and, and also have some fun with that. Today we begin at the beginning. We begin today with Adam. The first three chapters of Genesis focus on the first six days of creation. It begins with the creation of the universe, the creation of the world, it then moves on to the creation of life on our planet, animals and plants, of course. And then it culminates in the creation of man and woman, Adam and Eve. These are not myths. These are not legends. These are factual accounts of the creation of the world and the creation of us. Now, we could have read several passages about Adam in those first three chapters, but I chose today Genesis 1 here at the very beginning. Genesis 1, 26 says, God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Man is created. Genesis 2.20 is the first place that refers to the male as Adam. Genesis 3.20, the first place that refers to the female as Eve. Now, what I think we're going to enjoy or or do a little bit uh, creatively this summer is that we're going to connect the Old Testament and the New Testament, the glimpses that are given to us in Genesis, and then the explanation of those uh, glimpses in uh, in the New Testament. We're going to discover, of course, that, that it's Adam who is the father of mankind here on Father's Day, quite appropriate. Adam is the first one who provides a glimpse of Jesus. And I want to provide for you today three of those glimpses that are explained for us in the New Testament. 
Paul writes in Colossians chapter 1 about this first glimpse I want to share with you. He writes, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Now, the accounts of creation point us to this important truth, and that is Adam was the first man created. We see that in the book of Genesis. We know that to be true. Adam was the first man created. But the New Testament reminds us of another important and connected truth. Jesus was the creator. Adam was created. Jesus was the creator. Adam does not evolve from a lower life form. He's not a creation of the sudden coincidental explosion of molecules and amino acids. Adam is a created being. And in his creation we see, according to Paul in Colossians, we see Jesus. Genesis says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Even before Adam, there was Jesus. Paul said, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created. Before there was Adam, there was Jesus. You know, I'm the uh, third of three boys, and by the time I came along, uh, my mom was ready to save a buck or two, okay? You know, my, my, my brothers got everything, and I got the short end of every stick that was ever created. And so I remember one year uh, for my uh, birthday, um, I asked for an album. Now, those of you who don't know who an album is, uh, talk to your grandparents, and they'll tell you. Uh, you can still get albums at Target and play. Anyway, I asked for an album, and, uh, and then my mom said, what would you like? And I said, I would like, uh, I would like Earth, Wind, and Fire. I wanted an Earth, Wind, and Fire album, okay? All you children of the 70s, you know what I'm talking about, an Earth, Wind, and Fire album. And so uh, on my birthday, it came, and uh, you know, always know an album. You can't, not, you can't wrap an album and not know what it is. And I knew, I, I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to get my Earth, Wind, and Fire album. And so I opened up the, uh, the, the album that I got for my birthday, and, and there it was. My mom's saving a buck. Uh, there was one of those Ronco albums, if you remember Ronco, and the, the title of the album was, no joke, the title was Sounds Like Earth, Wind, and Fire. And it didn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it was nice, you know, thanks, Mom, for my awesome bad album, you know. Uh, it was nice, I guess, but it was not the real thing. Adam was the first man, but he wasn't the first of all things. Adam was created. He was not the creator. Created in the image of the creator, he is a glimpse of the real deal. Now, the second glimpse, I'm going to apologize a little bit. It's a link, I'm going to read for you a lengthy passage of Scripture, and I apologize because I know sometimes that that's, gets kind of long. And I sent it to Barry, who does a great job with the slides. I mean, he does an amazing job. And I said, Barry, I'm going to cut this down. I'm just sending you the whole thing now, but then I'm going to cut it down. You know, just, you know, I don't want want people falling asleep while I'm reading Scripture. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I kept, and I couldn't cut any of it. It's all so good. Paul does this amazing job in Romans 5 of connecting Adam with Jesus. And I couldn't cut any of it out. And so, you know, forgive me, it's eight verses, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's, there's a lot of slides, okay? Um, but it's powerful. Listen to what Paul says comparing Adam to Jesus, Jesus to Adam. He says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men because all sinned, for before the law was given, sin was in the world, But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern, a glimpse of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. 
For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brought life for all men. And here's, I probably could have just done this verse. This is the one I want you to underline in your Bible. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man the many will be made righteous. Adam's actions brought death. Jesus' actions bring life. Living in the perfection of the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sinned. Genesis 3, you can read that later on. Genesis 3 outlines this decision on their part, this decision that resulted in what we now refer to as the fall. Made in the image of God with free will and the ability to make choices for themselves, they chose the path of sin. As punishment for their sin, God said they would die. To show them the cost of their sins, God slaughtered animals and made clothes for Adam and Eve. They experienced pain. They experienced loss. And one day they did indeed die, setting the pattern for humanity forever. Birth, the willful choice of sin, and then one day, death. But, praise God, that's not the end of the story. And as one man's choice brought us death, another man's choice brought us eternal life. Jesus' death and resurrection mean that we can have forgiveness, we can have righteousness, we can have grace, we can be justified, we can be made just in God's eyes, we can have abundant life here on this earth, and we can have abundant life for eternity. Adam standing at the base of that tree, holding that fruit in his hand, there in the middle of the Garden of Eden, is a glimpse of Jesus prostrate at the foot of another tree in the Garden of Gethsemane, holding the fate of humanity in his hand. One chose poorly. The other chose wisely for us. Third glimpse. After the fall, when God has confronted Adam and Eve, he pronounces their curse of pain, hardship, toil, death. He then turns to the evil one. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you've done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you'll eat dust all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. You'll, you'll harm him, but he will kill you. Here in Genesis, this account of creation, the universe is created, the world is created, plants and animals are created, we are created, and then here in chapter 3, one other facet of creation is introduced, and it's the creation of hope, creation of grace, the creation of salvation. Created long before the first star was ever fashioned, God had his plan in place, and that plan is announced here. Adam's offspring would defeat the devil. One day, a descendant of this first couple would be the one to defeat sin, to defeat evil, to defeat death for good, and we all know that Jesus is the one who did. Paul writes in Romans 16, the God of peace will soon crush Satan. John writes in 1 John, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And then the last book of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, Revelation tells us that the, de the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Jesus crushed the evil one. And has an eternal destiny of torment planned for the one who deceived Adam, who deceived Eve, and who, dece who deceived us. 
Today, with our glimpses from the life of Adam, we celebrate Jesus who rescues us from sin. Since the dawn of creation, mankind has needed an answer to sin. And Jesus is that answer for every single one of us. Regardless of what you've done in the past, no matter how terrible you may think it is or how terrible it was, Jesus can forgive you. There's no need to live with guilt. Jesus can forgive you. There is a remedy to all of the wrong that you've ever done, and Jesus is the remedy. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're already a follower of Jesus, turn that guilt, turn those sins that you keep hanging on to, turn them over to the one who is the author of salvation, the one who made a conscious decision to die for you and those horrible sins. If you're not a follower of Jesus, turn to him today. Only he can forgive. Only he can give you a second chance. Only he can make what was wrong right. Call on his name. Be baptized into him, washing away your sins. The creator of the universe, the creator, offers you forgiveness today. This uh, past Sunday, um, while Seth preached in the worship, in this room, in the, the sanctuary services, our, our intern Jacob he preached in our worship center services. So they both preached to you know in the different places. And when Jacob w- was done at the eleven fifteen service, um, a woman walked up to him and said to him, "You you mentioned baptism in your in your sermon today. Um, um, can I be baptized?" And Jacob's f- first reaction to her was. Yeah, do you want to do it today? And she was kind of taken back by that. You know, it was like, well, you know, I mean, she obviously she hadn't thought about that and wasn't prepared. For that. Anyway, long story short, they finally came and they found me. I was I was in the late service last week, and uh, they came and found me and told me this, you know. And she said, Yeah, I, I'd like to talk to you about being baptized. My first response to her was, Would you like to do it today? And she goes, well, yeah, but I don't, I'm, you know, she kind of, I was like, oh, no, 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 we have shirts, we have shorts, we have all, we have towels, we have everything you need. Typically, the water is warm, not always, typically the water is warm, 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and 366 on leap year, our, our baptistry is ready to, two baptistries are ready to go. And she started to cry. And she said, well, I'd like to be baptized today. And then her daughter said, well, I'd like to be baptized today. And then her husband said, I'd like to be baptized today. And at 1230 last Sunday afternoon, a a family of three was baptized in the worship center baptistry. When the Lord tugs on your heart and the Holy Spirit moves within your life, say yes. He tugs on every one of our hearts in different ways. So, you know, sometimes it is to repent of a sin that's going on in our life. Sometimes it's to be baptized. Sometimes it's to call on the name of the Lord and confess your faith in Him. Sometimes it's to get involved in service. Sometimes it's to change a habit that's, that's, that's bad. Sometimes it's to change a relationship that's pulling you away from Jesus. Every single, there's something in our lives that the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart today. Say yes. Say yes. We're going to have a time of invitation today, and that's a time for you to pray and ask God, you know, Lord, I I think this is where you're tugging on my heart today, and I'm ready. I'm ready to say yes. If that's to give your life to Christ, if that's to be baptized, say yes, and we can do that right now here today. What an awesome day that would be. Tracy's going to lead us in a song. Why don't you stand and let's sing together. Number 372, Living for Jesus, verses 1 and 4.
At the 8 o'clock service this morning, uh, Esther Terry uh, stepped forward during the invitation time and made this her church home. Uh, it was an awesome thing. Uh, she's been worshiping with us for some time, but today made that decision to officially make Fairmount her home. And if that's something that is of interest to you, I'd be more than happy to talk with you about that. Uh, what a, a great thing. We would, we would love to have you as part of our church family, and I would uh, lo love to sit down and talk with you about what that would mean here at Fairmount. Uh, it is good to worship with you today. Uh, happy Father's Day to all you dads. Uh, uh, you're all welcome. Whoever wants to uh, can go out and get their picture taken out here at, the, uh, at our boats. We have a boat at both entrance uh, with uh, free bobbers. And uh, you take a bobber. If you don't fish, give your bobber to somebody who does, you know. Uh, but uh, just go out there and enjoy our, our, our Father's Day photo op today and uh, have your picture taken uh, with kids. Uh, we don't care if they're your kids or somebody else's kids, but just go on out there and, and enjoy that. Uh, and then um, I want to make sure everybody knows Vacation Bible School starts next Sunday evening. That is to me, that is my favorite week of the year on our church calendar. Uh, I love VBS and uh, this is the first year in three years where we'll be able to have our entire program here on campus. Uh, we have an adult class that meets every night. Uh, it'll be in this room and Seth is going to be leading that class. Uh, uh, there's dinner every night for the adults who come to that class. Amen. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, then we also have our, our, a program for our teenagers and then a program for children. And that's usually what we think about with VBS. Yes, but VBS not just for kids, it's for everybody, it's for the whole family. And so uh, if you are bringing children, students, uh, if you're bringing teens, uh, please register them so we know, you know we have all the right stuff and all that. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, go on our website or uh, contact the church office and let them know that you're going to be bringing your kids, your grandkids, your neighbor's kids. We don't care whose kids you bring, uh, but just bring them on up here for VBS. It's a great week of diving into God's Word. It's a great week of fellowship, of getting to, you know, in, uh, you know on Sunday morning we're in worship and then we're in Bible school and then we're head, you know, uh, but it's a time just to enjoy fellowship, enjoy God's Word, and uh, it's a lot of fun as well. So I uh, want to make sure that you're making VBS plans for next Sunday through Thursday uh, every night, and uh, I hope that you'll be here for that. All right, let's pray together. Uh, God, thank you so much for uh, being our awesome, awesome Father. Uh, help the fathers of our uh, church and our community to uh, always be focused on you and following in your footsteps. Uh, bless us as we leave this place. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, our world needs to hear that they can be forgiven of, the, of their sins. And so may we share that message with others. Uh, I pray today in the name of Jesus. Amen.